I've talked about one very impressive study by John Hattie. He collected data for years where each of his data points was itself the result of another study that took a long time. That's a lot of work. I want to explain to you how MOOCs offered the opportunity to do all these studies much more quickly and efficiently. The first thing to know is that every single click on the major platforms is tracked. If you were to pause the video now, they would know it. If you're watching this accelerated, they know it as well. They also know how often a student posts on the forum or how many times they tried quiz questions. All this data is analyzed and some of the smartest brains in the world actually try to make sense out of it. The question, the big question, is what works best for teaching online and maybe even what works best for teaching. A video of a talking head, Beamer slides with an insert of the instructor, or maybe without the insert. Some guy's paper cutouts? Who knows? This data is analyzed, and it's not a sample size of n equals 20, but it's more like n equals 2 million. I'll try to give you a flavor of what is already possible. Let's start with a concrete situation. Let's say you have an ad for a cool project to change the world. You want people to help you. So you will write a flyer that says, Want to change the world? Come and join me at this day and place. You know that that's not enough to attract people, so you want to add, to add a hook before. You don't, want, you don't know for sure what to put in. You think maybe the line, want cookies or want pizza, might attract people. But what will grab people's attention and attract people to your project? You don't know, and in the real world, you won't know unless you try both in parallel and see afterwards which one is most su successful. How do you do that? Well, by interviewing the people who show up. This takes time, and again, it doesn't scale well. Let's say now you're Google. You literally make millions of dollars of revenue per hour, most of it through people clicking on ads in the sidebar. One of your employees thinks that a particular shade of green will definitely help highlight the ads, but not too much so that it doesn't bother the users. You, as Google, want to try it because you know there is a lot of money there. But you are afraid of changing something that works pretty well already. So what you can do is to pick a random 10% of the users of a random small country, say Belgium, and show to them that new green shade. And then you can compare those users to other users where the experiment was not performed. Maybe you can also pick another country, say the Netherlands, and do the same experiment with another color, say orange. Or you can try changing the size of the ads, or all at the same time fitting each user into their own highly individualized blend of experiments. As long as you can extract meaningful data, why wouldn't you do it? Well, that's what Google does. Every time you go on Google, hundreds of experiments are actually performed on you. The page you get for a particular search is slightly different from the page offered to anyone else for the same search, and they try to optimize the page for you. This is called A-B testing, and it's used extensively to optimize the web. I know it sounds silly to talk about this for education, but I don't think it really is silly. Many blackboards are dark green because some tests were performed a long time ago, and people figured out this was better for the eyes. You can see the similarity with Google's experiment there. Many more studies have been done since in education to try to improve other factors, maybe more meaningful than just the blackboard color. But this is slow and requires lots of manual work. Again, similar studies can be done in a MOOC space, but actually much more is possible, much faster and much more efficiently. For instance, you can alter the material presented to the students in very subtle ways and see what has an effect and what does not. So let's say you split your class in two and measure how effective it actually is to start a class with a little preview of the problem that you want to solve at the end. This could be done effortlessly by the teacher or someone doing educational research. The technology to perform these studies exists and is well understood because it was used extensively in other industries before and is now being applied to education. Some conferences are starting on these topics and releasing lots of insight into what works and what does not. It's hard to argue when someone comes with a study conducted on millions of students. You ask for a follow-up and six months later they come back with that follow-up. This is tremendously accelerating for education and very exciting.